I am who you say I am. I am chosen. That's sort of where we're going today with the scripture, with the message as a whole. And as I was getting ready to uh, give this message, I went over to see my son last week over in Orlando. And we've been talking about the idea that we're fallen. So one of the things that we are is fallen. So when Jack started off preaching on this particular series on the fallen, we were preaching from Genesis and we were talking about the, the story of Adam and Eve and the tree, the fruit, and how the fruit wasn't an apple. And that was the whole point of the sermon. <laughs> Not. But I want to tell you that I have been to Orlando and I have found the fruit. I went to this wonderful place called the Goofy Candy Store. <laughs> One of the things we love doing is going there and that is the fruit. <laughs> this was sitting there on the counter, a candy covered apple. And as we're there looking at this candy covered apple, we're in line to get the things that we want and there's this family that comes walking in the door and as they come walking in the door, there's this little girl and she looks over and she sees the candied apples. And you'll notice that there's one for every one of us in the background. And as she's looking at it, I can tell she wants this apple. Her parents realize she wants this apple. And so they look down at her and they're like, honey, do you want the apple? And she said, no. Of course she said yes. She wants the $10.99 apple. So in that moment, I'm standing between her and the apple. And I get this opportunity to be able to look in the parent's eyes. Is it okay? Yes. And I'm able to grab the apple and I get to look at her as she looks up with these eyes of joy as I hand her the apple that's bigger than her hands. And then I was like, that is such a cool moment. So I thought, I'm going to take a picture of another apple. And I would have asked the parents if I could have taken a picture of her with the apple, but I thought that would be like a creeper. <laughs> So I waited for them to leave and I took a picture of the apple. And the reason I did that was, I'm thinking how much I liked that little spark of a moment. Just, just, just a moment in time where the simple recognizing a family walking in, seeing the child, realizing that the child wants the apple, or realizing that I'm between the apple and the child and be able to take that apple and to be able to hand it to her and to be able to see the smile that I got to see. And I was thinking, I want more moments like that. And as we're talking about the idea of fallen, there's two sides to that story. That we're not just fallen. And for me, that moment represented the other side of the equation. So I want to read to you from a book called Colossians. It's written by Paul. And hopefully for us to sort of unpack a little bit, not that we're just fallen, but that we're something else. And here's what it says. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion and kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another. And if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body. And be thankful. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our Lord endures forever. So there you hear it. There's the story of the fallen, but if you hear Paul, he wrestles with that a little bit. He believes that the idea is true, that, that, that what happened back in Genesis, that, that there was this moment where 
where who we were no longer was. And who we are meant to be, we no longer are. And he wrestles with that throughout many of the books he's written. So he writes a couple different things. He, he's written things like, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. He said that all die in Adam, but right the very next section, all are made alive in Christ. And from today, he talks about us being what? Chosen ones. And I think when you, when you think of the point for, for the, the whole creation moment with Adam and Eve, the point is that, that both of them sin. Both have fallen short. Both have stepped into a place where they are fallen, male and female. And that there is truly an apple for every single one of us. But it's not the end of the story. The whole idea of chosen, that we're not just fallen, but we're chosen. We're not just sinful. We're made in the image of God. That both of these things are present inside of each one of us. The fallen nature and, and the, the God present in us nature is inside of me and it's inside of you. And John Wesley, when, when he was wrestling with the, the Methodist movement and getting it started, actually was looking at, at some of the early church fathers and wrestling with an idea that was in the Catholic church and the Orthodox church called theosis. Very fancy word, but what it basically means is that, that, that we can become like God. God. Irenaeus and Athanasius end up writing about this in like the 100s and the 300s. And here's what Athanasius actually said. He said, the son of God became man that we might become God. And what he's saying when you hear that, it's like, what do you mean, Richard, how we become God? How can we become God? How is that even possible? And yet this is a, a tradition that's existed pretty much since the start of Christianity. The idea is, is that, that Christ doesn't just dwell in us. Christ is meant to dwell through us. That we're so filled by Christ, by the Holy Spirit, that we're meant to be pouring that same Spirit back out into the world in ways that, that literally become Christ for others. John Wesley talked about it from the perspective of perfection, that we can become perfected in love, that there's a journey that we're all on, that we claim Christ and we have a, a grace that's available to us there, but that grace is urging us ever stronger and more present in terms of who it means to be a Christian, to have Christ inside of us, the Holy Spirit just pushing us and pushing us and pushing us on an upward journey towards perfection. It's not perfection in that everything I do is right. It's a perfection in love that my heart is right as I'm seeking to be in relationship with the other. And the reality is, is that, that that's inside of each one of us. It was there in that moment when I was there with that little kid in the apple. For just a moment, I saw it. I saw, I saw a moment where I'm like, I'm in this moment. And and Christ is present in this moment over the silly little apple. But it's not just there. I, I went back, so this Halloween is approaching, right? And so I went digging through my photos because um, we do this wonderful thing at All Pro Dad where we're trying to connect the dads to the kids. And the whole point of All Pro Dad and iMoms is to help that to happen. So you're always trying to get them to have conversation with each other. And so with... Halloween approaching, we were doing this lesson and I was doing a would you rather. So you would rather this or would you rather that? And one of the questions that I asked is would you rather be a superhero or would you rather be a supervillain? And so they talk to each other. And as they're talking, I get to the place where I'm like, where's my superheroes? And a bunch of hands go up across the room. And then I go, where's my supervillains? And a few hands go up, and I'm like, you're evil. <laughs> okay, I didn't really say that to them. <laughs> they're kids. Come on. Give me a little credit, right? So here this, here's this moment, and suddenly they're like uh, telling me, like, who's your, who's your favorite superhero? And, and it's like Wonder Woman, Superman, Spider-Man, Captain Marvel. Each one of them having this thing inside of them that, that shows, I think, the idea that there's something inside of us that wants to get out that is good. And so I dug up a picture because I was like thinking back to when I was a kid and who did I want to be for Halloween? And so here's a picture of me. Hopefully it will pop up 
Yep. <laughs> yep. I dressed up as Jesus. <laughs> so I'm in the other service and I'm wearing my robe. And I'm like, really, it doesn't look much different. I just took off the stole and I look like I'm in a black cape. Zorro. Zorro. In my, I wanted to be Zorro. I don't mean I wanted to pretend to be Zorro. I wanted to be Zorro. I wanted to be a person that, 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 that stood up to people that, that thought that they were all it, that they control things, to be able to say that people in poverty, people that are struggling, they matter, they make a difference. That was what I wanted. Something inside of me as a kid, something inside of you as a kid had this moment where it's like, oh, I want to be something beautiful. I want to be something that makes a difference. I want, to be, I want to be a hero. And so as I'm going through that, I'm like, here's the problem. Here's what I think is one of the major problems. We don't do the Apostles' Creed in here, but the Apostles' Creed is a, a, a thing that's been written back in 300, right? 300, that's a few years ago, that's carried through tradition. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate. Stop right there. Because somehow, some way, we got to this place where beliefs were more important than actions. And what happened in that moment is it goes with what they call the great comma. Conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate. There's this huge gap. Huge gap that eliminates his whole life, his whole ministry. It just goes from birth to suffering. And so I thought, my name is Richard Landon and I can rewrite the creed. <laughs> yep, 300, so what, 1700 years of tradition. And what I did was I took, I took the scripture from today and I merely inserted it where that comma happens. So the creed I've written goes like this. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, comma. Now listen. Lived a life filled with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Taught us how to forgive and above all else clothe himself with and taught us how to love. For this, for this, he suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead and ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, Father Almighty. Why is it that we, we talk so much about what we believe and forget how we are supposed to live as God's chosen ones? Why is it that we, we let go of, of what it meant to be early in Christianity called followers of the way? People that, that when you looked at them, and it didn't matter if you were for Christians or against Christians, both populations looked and would be able to see in the life of Christians a life that was changed. A life that was different. We can't take that section and have the comma eliminate all that stuff. What happened in the moment in the Garden of Eden was a wedge called sin drove itself in to, into the world. In that moment, we end up splitting these two things in half. And what we're supposed to be doing in this moment is taking that wedge, the wedge that is Jesus Christ inside of us, that's getting outside of us, that's living through us. That's a new wedge. That's a wedge that's breaking into the world, separating the darkness and letting the light come in. And that light, that wedge is you and it's me and it's us together as one. I am fallen you are fallen, we are fallen, but we are also children of God. We are chosen to be something different in the world now. 
That, that wedge of sin that came in, it ended up separating what creation was supposed to be from what it is now. And now we get to actually take that and make it something different. We get to make it back the way it was supposed to be. We even get to, if you were to go back into the church fathers, we even get to carry it a little bit further. Because what they end up saying is, what Adam and Eve had back here, we actually have more of. They didn't have God in them, they just had God with them. We have God in us and we get to live this life. And so I'm thinking about that apple moment and I'm thinking I want more of those moments. I want more Christ moments and I think in your heart of hearts, the reason you show up on a Sunday is you're hoping, you're hoping that you can just get this moment where you can see it but I think if you were to go back in time and look, if you went even into the past week, you might have noticed moments where you could have stepped in or maybe you did step in and acknowledge it as a Christ moment that you got to live. And you can keep doing that over and over and over again. As I think about it, here's what I came up with. If we want to see more Christ moments, we've got to be Christ in more moments. Do you hear that? If you want to see more Christ moments, you've got to be Christ in more moments. And you get to. I'm even going to invite you to say, you know what, you can live this today, you can live this tomorrow, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you can put this into your prayer life of like, God, help me to see and to be. Help me to see where it is that you'd like me to, to, to be your presence and then help me to be your presence in the midst of it. And you can walk out of here right now having the opportunity to do that. We had all these students get up and walk out seeking to be Christ. If you see a kid walking around ask them, are you here today? Are you helping out with the meal packing? That makes a huge difference. Thank you for what you are doing. It's that simple. And I think if you start having these little God moments, if I start having these little God moments, the veil will come down and we'll see more. And it won't be about candy apples. It'll be about things that are far bigger and more challenging. And we get to do those too. My hope and my prayer is that, that we actually end up walking that walk. I, I, I was looking at the, the heading for this scripture um, that I was reading, and here's what it said. This is a subheading, which doesn't mean it's part of the Bible. They just stick it in. How they had phrased it up is living as those made alive in Christ. Living as those made alive in Christ. My prayer is that that's who I will be. That I will be a person that is alive in Christ. Not just here and there and there. But more and more frequently as I journey towards perfection. Shall we pray? God, what we do realize is that we are fallen and at the same time we are created not just good, but very good. And Lord, that you've poured your spirit into us and that your intention is that spirit would pour out of us. That through us, thy kingdom come. Help us, God. Help us to see and help us to be more and more like your son, our Lord and our Savior in whose name we pray, Jesus the Christ. And we all say, amen. amen.